Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. I am Muhammad and today we're gonna be discussing how we can host our static web app on Azure. We're gonna be going through step by step of how we can set up the infrastructure. We're gonna be utilizing Terraform to do this. And then once we have done this, we're gonna be uploading our web, uh, web page and then we're gonna be seeing it live running from Azure. So without further ado, let's get started. So first of all, we're going to be understanding what we're going to be building. So Azure provides us with a capability to create storage. And within the storage, what we can do is we can actually create containers. And we can think of containers as folders that currently exist within our storage. So we can think about them as they are directories or they are basically some kind of a folder that currently exists within our storage. So we have containers. And within our containers, what do we have? We have capabilities to host different items inside of it. So inside this folder, what we're gonna have is we're gonna be creating a folder and this folder is gonna be called web. And this web folder is basically, we can enable it in order for it to, have to host a static website. So what I can do is I can actually enable this folder that currently exists here into actually displaying a website. And this folder here will have its own unique URL. It will have all of the HTML, CSS, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, images, etc., that are needed in order for this to run. And with all of that, we are able to also make any types of asynchronous code utilizing JavaScript to any of the third party services that we might need. So, if we want to connect to a different service, we want to connect to a Lambda function, to an Azure function, to any types of functions, we're able to do, the, to do this as well. But the main important thing that this web folder here that currently exists needs to be completely static. So, we cannot put any C sharp code here, we cannot put any any dynamic content. We can only host static HTML and that static HTML can do any types of calls using JavaScript in order for it to actually have dynamic data. But actually running C Sharp is not, even, it's not possible. So what are we gonna be doing? So what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be utilizing Terraform. And through Terraform, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be creating first a resource group. So we're gonna be creating a resource group and we can think about a resource group as a way where we can actually organize our different components that actually gonna be running on uh, so it is a fundamental item that we need to have within Azure, which is a resource group. And this resource group will allow us to, for example, if I'm hosting like my currency converter or I'm, I'm hosting my short URL application that I created, and I want to make sure that, let's say I have different applications. I have a, a currency converter, I have a URL shortener, I have my websites, I have, for example, different SaaS applications. I don't want all of these different services to have to live in the same place. I want to organize them in a way on Azure so I can actually monitor every single application differently. I can understand the cost of every single application differently. I can allocate different resources for everyone or for one of these differently. I don't want to have all one single bucket that's going to include everything because it's going to make it very hard for me to manage it in the long run. But if I have a resource group, resource group allow me to do this by actually separating those resources into different comp compartments. We can think about it that way. And by, by doing so, I'm able to have much more control about any of those applications that I'm currently creating. So that's why we need to have a resource group. And inside this resource group, what I'm going to be creating, I'm going to be creating a blob storage. And once I create this blob storage, what I want to do is I'm basically telling Azure that uh, I want to have some kind of a storage mechanism inside Azure. Uh, Azure storage is one of the most reliable storage that you can, that it currently exists on the market. And it has a lot of different functionalities that allows us to have a lot of different capabilities embedded in our application. We're going to be utilizing one of these capabilities is going to be storing static web application. So once I have my, uh, my blob storage available, all I want to do there after I do this is I'm going to be telling it that I'm going to be enabling a feature inside of this and the feature that I want to enable is static website. And basically within a static website, within a blob storage, I'm actually allowed, as we said before, to have my HTML, my CSS, my JavaScript and everything there. And I'm also able to have its own unique custom domain. I can have a custom domain for this. So we can have custom domain, we can have different uh, SSL, etc. that we need to do. But for now, we're just going to make it very simple. We're just going to be utilizing this static website with the default domain that Azure generates for me once it's enabled. And what I'm going to be doing is within this Terraform, I'm going to be able to manage all of this. And we can, we're can we going to be able to see that within, like I would say in total, like 50 lines of code, we are able to actually make this all up and running. 
So what are we gonna be needing in order for us to do this? We're gonna be needing a couple of things. So first of all, you need to have Terraform downloaded and installed on your machine. You're gonna be needing to have the Azure CLI downloaded and uh, installed on our machine. And that's it. And you need a code editor. A code editor for this, I'm gonna be utilizing Visual Studio Code. So these are gonna be the three items that we're gonna be needing in order for us to, to create this. On top of that, uh, which goes without saying, we're gonna be needing an Azure account. You can set up to Azure for free. They will give you a certain amount of money uh, that you can actually experiment with for 30 days and you can be able to see all of the different functionality that currently exists. I think they give you a hundred dollars. So you can actually use that money in order for you to create anything that you want and explore Azure. So within this, what we're gonna be doing is once we have these three items set up or four items set up, our Azure account, our Terraform installed on our machine, uh, Azure CLI, as well as VS Code, we're gonna be able to do all of this. So if I go here, if you want to install uh, Azure CLI, if you have a Mac, you can download it through Homebrew. You can just follow the Brew install Azure CLI and you'll be able to have it there. Similar to Terraform, you can just put the Brew install Terraform and you'll be able to have it there as well. For Azure, just go to Azure registration. Let me open it here. So as you can see here, like with Azure, you can start for free. You'll have a lot of services that always going to be free. No matter what, like a virtual machine, you'll have SQL Server database that you can utilize, Azure Blob Storage, which we're going to be using can be also for free, Cosmos DB, etc, etc. So all of these can be for free. You don't have to pay anything at all for them. And that's why it's really good for us to utilize these free services to host our own free static website on it. So once we have done this, you have created your account, you have done all of that. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be start by creating our infrastructure utilizing Terraform and we're going to be seeing how that's going to work. So let's get started. So the first thing that I want to do here is I want to create a new file and I'm going to call it config. And the, li the reason I would like, I like to always put a number before the actual naming of my Terraform file. So I understand the structure and the order of what I need to do. So if we take a look back at the diagram here that I currently have, we can see that the first item is going to be my resource group. The second item is going to be my blob storage. The third item is going to be my static website. So we can see there's some kind of hierarchy in order for me to have this up and running. And for me to organize my file in the same manner here, it will allow me to have similar type of hierarchy. So if I need to go to something instead of me trying to search through the uh, different naming convention I can just go through the hierarchy numbering and I can directly find it as a personal preference you can uh, do whatever you want so once I have my I created my file it has to have a tf uh, extension for stand for terraform one more thing before we get started if you go to the extensions here you can actually download a terraform extension which is really helpful from hashicorp and this one here it will allow you to directly have a lot of different implementation you have a lot of different functionalities automatically enabled into your visual studio code and specifically when it comes to auto completion for your terraform i highly recommend you install this and install the azure terraform extension as well both of them will come really really helpful and very very useful so let's continue with this so here all i want to do right now is i want to first create or define i want to tell terraform what are the uh, cloud providers that i want to connect to because terraform is compatible with multiple cloud providers the first thing that i want to tell terraform is what is the cloud provider that i want to utilize so let's see how we can do this so i put terraform then i specified my required providers and then here i need to specify that i want to connect to azure so i put azure rm equal and then here basically i'm saying that i want to utilize azure resource manager and then basically i need to specify the version of azure because as we know azure is api based and there's different versions of azure's apis so i want to specify here that i want to use the latest version of azure i need to specify where this package is going to be utilizing and it's going to be the hashicorp one and i need to specify the version and i'm going to say the version has to be equal to 3.85.0 and what you can do is this is just like copy paste from somewhere else but the reason it's it's good for us to add it here it's a required and it's order for us to understand here that this number that we see here is version of the azure rm so if we go back to my website so let me just show you this quickly so we can see here that azure rm on terraform website the latest version is 3.89 and has been updated six days ago we're going to be using the version 85 which also should be fine with it as well on top of all of that if i want to see any of the previous versions we can see here if i click 
click on this we can see all of these different pre previous versions that currently exist click on all versions we can able to see and scroll back to all of the different versions that exist and it's always good to use the latest version so i might just utilize the 3.89 right now so once we have done that the next step is i want to specify if there's any specific features that i want and for this purpose i don't want i don't have any specific features so i'm just going to leave it empty but i need to make sure it's empty so i'll do this so i put provider azure rm put features and i'm just going to leave it empty for now and then once i have done that now we're gonna now we have done the main infrastructure side or basically the main configuration side i'm gonna start now by actually defining my resource group so to do this i'm gonna specify resource i'm gonna put azure rm underscore resource group you can see it here i'm gonna give it a name i'm gonna call it rg underscore test i can call it whatever i want and then here what i want to do is i want to i will need to give it a name so we can see we have different items that we can actually provide the first one is going to be the name and i'm going to call it rg dash test and i need to specify a location of where this resource group is going to live and i'm going to say it's going to be in the uk south okay perfect so now that I have this, now what I can do is I can go to my terminal. We make this a bit bigger. And inside my terminal, if I put Terraform in it, we can see that everything is being initialized. We can see the latest version of Terraform is being downloaded on my machine. We can see I have a new folder called Terraform has been downloaded. And we can see I have some kind of a locking mechanism that has been enabled. So if I do now Terraform plan, now we can see here that within Terraform plan, we can see that I have a new resource group that needs to be created. So let me just create this resource group and actually let me just apply it and we can see it up and running on Azure. So all I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna put Terraform, actually let's clear it up, Terraform apply. And it's gonna ask me for a confirmation. Do I really want to create this? I'm gonna say yes. And now we can see one resource has been added. So let's open it up in Azure and see it. So right now this is on Azure and I had to make the screen bigger because so, it had, it's some sensitive information but as we can see here that i have my rg test has already been created and this is the resource group that i just created if we click on it we're going to see there is nothing available in it because it's empty but that means that my application has been created or basically my resource group has been created successfully okay perfect so now what we're going to be doing is we're going to actually start creating our storage account so we have already covered this here so what we have done right now is we have created our resource group now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating our blob storage so let's see how we can do this let's close our terminal uh, and then what i'm gonna do i'm gonna create a new file I'm gonna call it one i'm gonna call it storage tf and basically from here what i need to do i need to create another resource and this source is gonna be azure rm underscore storage account and i'm gonna call it st let's say dash website or web app perfect so now that i have done this there's a couple of features that i need to enable in it so first of all i need to specify the name and i can make it for example my test web app one two three make sure the name is unique we cannot have uh, any random name we need to make sure that the name is unique so i'm just gonna put any random characters here then i need to specify my resource group name so i'm gonna put resource group name and the nice thing about terraform it allows me to connect to current resources that i have just created so we can see here from the drop down list i have my azure rm resource a group rg test and i'm gonna put dot name and that's gonna be what i need and also i'm gonna be needing the location so i'm gonna utilize the azure rm rg test dot location because it's gonna be the same thing this needs to be an underscore just to make it better so now that we have specified this there is other items that i need to add which is going to be the account count tier and i'm going to say it's going to be standard there's a lot of different options we're going to be going with standard for now and then i need to specify the account replication type i'm just going to say lrs so account replication types here mean in case my storage for any reason get damaged or destroyed how i'm going to be able to replicate all of the data there and lrs stand for local redundant storage so it only going to be locally uh, or basically on that data center is going to be a, have a redundant version of my files there is different types there is uh, based on the regions there is based on geoloc different geolocation for simplicity sake we're sticking with lrs which is local redundancy and then the last item that i want to add from this access configuration it's going to be my account kind and here i'm going to specify it's going to be storage v2 if you want to configure any of this you can directly go to the website of azure you can see all of these different configuration right now i'm just utilizing the standard configuration that comes out of the box and the last item which is going to be really important here i need to specify my static website and for a static website i need to tell it what is going to be the main index document for it i'm just going to say it's going to be index.html and now 
this is going to be the main items this needs to be account tier not access tier okay perfect so now that i have all of these available i have my name i have my resource group information i have my location i have my account tier my account application and my kind and my, i have my static website the last thing that i want to do once it comes to this is first of all i want to create a simple html page i'm going to call it index but html this is going to be the website that i want to build and all i'm going to do here is i'm going to put a html let's put an empty head i'm gonna put a body as well and i'm gonna say here put a h1 i'm saying hello world from tf and youtube i can do whatever i want here and this is gonna be my html page that's gonna upload it now i want to specify that this is gonna be the page that's gonna be uploaded so let's see how we can do this so if we go back to my web browser we can now see here that this is gonna be the static website and again for the static website we said before that it needs to be called web which is a folder or the directory inside so or, a con or the container so now that's what I need to create and then once I do this it will be automatically available for me so all I'm gonna be doing here I'm gonna put resource and I'm gonna put azure rm underscore storage blob and here all I'm gonna say it's gonna be called main page I can call it whatever I want and then here I need to specify the information for this file that I want to upload which is gonna be my index.html so the first thing that I need to specify is the name for it and it's going to be index.html then i need to specify the container where it's going to live so it's going to be storage container name and this is this is really important it needs to be dollar web and this is going to be the main folder that's going to be created once we enable static website and this is where we need to upload it to then i need to specify the storage account name that i'm going to be utilizing and we need to utilize the same storage account that we just created previously so as you can see here i have my storage account dot name and then i need to specify the type and here it's going to be of type block, which is going to be like a file if you'd like to think about it that way. And then I want to specify the content type. And this content type is going to be simply HTML. So text forward slash HTML. And lastly, I need to specify the actual file that's going to be uploaded, which is going to be my index.html. And this is going to be the source. So I'm going to put source index.html. Okay, perfect. So now that I have done this, now let us actually upload it. So I'm going to open back my terminal. I'm going to put terraform plan okay block what did i type or oh, needs to be capital so let's try this again terraform plan we can see now everything is actually passing so we can see here that's going to create a new storage account called web app and we're going to be seeing also here that it's gonna oops it's gonna also create my blog my blog which is going to be my main page okay so now all i need to do is put terraform apply it's gonna ask me do you really want to do this i'm gonna say yes and now that has been created and let me go back to my web browser actually first of all let us see it in azure so let's go to azure here let me refresh we can see here that my test web app one two three my storage account has been we are able to see that i have i have it up and running and now if i let me make this a bit smaller if i go down here to containers we can see that I have my web container available. If I click on that, I can see that I have my index.html and we can see here, this is the URL for it. If I go back, if I scroll a bit down, we'll have static website enabled. And within here, you can see that this is the link for my website. So if I click on take this link and put it in the new tab, you can see here, hello from TF and YouTube. And basically I got a free domain. I got my application up and running. And all of this has happened with, let me close this. And all of this has happened with here, 23 lines of code and here with 19. So we can say for less than 50 lines of code, I was able to create a website, host it on Azure and make it all up and running. So the reason that I wanted to cover this is just to see that Azure has has a lot of different capabilities that we can actually utilize it's very easy for us to create our own services on azure using terraform we can see the power of infrastructure as code because basically with this right now we were able to see that we can actually version this so if i want to move it from one account to another create a different resource group i don't really need to recreate everything i just can take this code and deploy it elsewhere and uh, i hope this uh, introduction to it has been really helpful if you have any questions if you have any clarifications please let me know i'll be more than happy to help if you'd like to support me please consider supporting me on patreon or buy me a coffee with that said thank you very much for watching and have a great day.